issue which I raised in last year's fundraising dinner. What happened to our 42 billion ringgit 1MDB hole? We are now, last year I told you about the scandals that was erupting. This year we are facing the effects of this scandal. This year, early this year, 1MDB had a loan of 2 billion ringgit which it could not pay. It was due supposed to pay Maybank, RHB Bank, Alliance Bank and a few other banks 2 billion ringgit and this 1MDB cannot find 2 billion ringgit in its account to pay this loan it went around begging for money went to all the banks to ask for money eh, hey, tolong tolong, please lend me some money lah you know, I just need to pay this 2 billion only after that I'll figure out a way to pay you no bank in Malaysia is willing to lend any more money to 1MDB. You know how shameful that is? 1MDB, a wholly owned subsidiary of the Ministry of Finance. 1MDB, with a board of advisors chaired by the Prime Minister and the Finance Minister himself. No bank is willing to give the Ministry of Finance, the Minister of Finance, any face. Sorry, uh, we can't lend you any more money. Bobina, Lao Kuya. Really shameful. So much so that they have to go to all the Thai calls. Uh, Tan Sri, you got a lot of contracts from us already before. Can you now lend us a bit 2 billion ringgit to tide us over this difficult period? Finally, they have to rely on Tan Sri Ananda Krishnan to somehow find 2 billion ringgit to help pay for this loan. It is a 15-month loan. It is due again next year. Next year, I don't know 1MDB will look for which other country to help them pay. Then after that, that's not the end of it. Other loans are becoming due. In February, the Prime Minister approved by his cabinet an emergency loan of 950 million ringgit to 1MDB. 950 million loan immediately utilized. Immediately utilized to pay interest and service installments of all their loans. And this same Prime Minister in October last year, just three, four, four months before this emergency bailout 950 million, he stood up, he didn't stand up, he provided an answer in Parliament to Lim Guan Eng. What did he say? He said, don't worry, 1MDB is safe and sound. No money is lost. It is doing very well. And it's 42 billion ringgit of debt. It will settle itself. The government will not. This is the specific words used by the Prime Minister. The government will not bail out 1MDB other than the 5 billion US dollar, 5 billion ringgit, sorry, which the government has provided a guarantee for. And the 5 billion ringgit is not due yet. It's all the other loans that are due. And yet, four months later, they have to now fork out 950 million for, uh, to bail out 1MDB. That's not the end of it. In March, the cabinet approved another letter of support. What is a letter of support? Letter of support is to tell the bank, don't worry, if 1MDB cannot pay, the government will step in to help 1MDB pay. Effectively, it's a guarantee. Lah. That's a letter of support. They gave a letter of support to Bank Exim. 
to raise 150 million US dollar or roughly 540 million ringgit for one MDB to buy land from another crony company called uh, what's the company called already? Uh, Tatmax. Tatmax, which used to be related to the PKFZ scandal, the same people. To buy land. Then we asked in parliament, hey, Bank Exim is supposed to finance foreign trade. If your company going overseas, if you are exporting goods, if you are importing goods from overseas, you can borrow from Exim Bank. But if you are buying property in Malaysia, how can you borrow from Exim Bank? And the reason why they abuse their powers is because Exim Bank is a wholly owned government bank. The boss is the Ministry of Finance. So the Ministry of Finance approved the loan with a letter of support from the cabinet to give another 540 million ringgit to 1MDB. This is again our money. This is again our money. Not enough. We all heard about the Tabung Haji deal. Land which 1MDB bought for only how much? Ah? About 60 ringgit per square feet. They sold to Tabung Haji betrayed the interest of the thousands, millions of poor Malays saving to go to pilgrimage in Mecca for 2,770 ringgit per square feet. They bought from government just three years before for 60 ringgit, 64 ringgit per square feet. They sold to Tabung Haji for 2,770 ringgit per square feet for a total of 188 million, a small piece of land. And that's why I believe the Malays are now angry as well. While well, the Malays in the last general election may have given full support to Barisan National, this time round, I think the tides are definitely changing. What else? The Naga National came in to buy out a IPP contract from 1MDB. 1MDB got a contract from government. They got it despite not having beat the lowest price. They won the contract Project 3B. It is worth 11 billion ringgit. But 1MDB's problem is what? 1MDB's problem is they got no money to start the project. So got contract also no use. No one is willing to lend them money to start the project. They have no money to start the project. They have no choice but to give up the project. So I asked the ministry, if they have no money to start the project, they just should give the project back to the ministry and the ministry should open another open tender to award it to the best party to win the IPP contract, Independent Power Producer contract. But no, Tenaga got into a deal to buy out the contract from 1MDB. And as a reward for Tenaga, the government offered Tenaga higher tariffs for electricity. So all of you, in the near future, will be paying higher electricity, electricity rates in order to finance a bailout of 1MDB. That's what's happening at the moment. And today, today we got another land deal. This time, Afin Bank, probably the weakest of all local banks in Malaysia, bought another piece of land in Tun Raza Exchange from... 1MDB. They bought the land at how much? 255 million ringgit. How much per square feet? 4,000 ringgit per square feet. 4,000 ringgit per square feet. The highest record transacted price ever in Kuala Lumpur by any company in the history of Malaysia. And they bought the land who are the people running Afin Bank? The chairman of Afin Bank is Tan Sri Lok Kamarudin. Who is the chairman of 1MDB? Tan Sri Lok Kamarudin. Same people. It is the same people. Again, betraying the trust of Lembaga Tabung Angkatan Tentera, which owns Afin Bank, again, public money, using their money in order to bail out 1MDB. And that's also not enough. Not enough. Because they have to go to Arab again. They have to ask from IPIC, International Petroleum Investment Corporation of Abu Dhabi, for 1 billion US dollar advance. This is not 1 billion ringgit. Huh? 
1 billion US dollar. Today it's worth 4 billion ringgit. Advance. They say Abu Dhabi government very friendly to us. They gave us an advance of 1 billion in order to settle our debts. You think Abu Dhabi is so stupid? They want something in exchange. And we managed to discover the document via the London Stock Exchange where I pick International Petroleum Investment Corporation lease their bonds. They announced that not only 1MDB signed an agreement with IPIC, the Ministry of Finance also signed an agreement with IPIC. To say what? To say that they will indemnify 1MDB if 1MDB fails to repay the 1 billion US dollar in asset or other forms, okay, come one year's time in June next year. Effectively, the government just gave another guarantee of 1 billion US dollar to a foreign entity in order to save 1MDB. So we are seeing the full effects of a complete bailout of 1MDB now. And it's not finished yet. Huh? It is not finished yet because the hole is so big. It's so big that Najib asked for six months to solve all his problems. I can assure you here, I will bet hopefully not my last dollar, that in six months' time, we will still be suffering from the 1MDB fallout, financial fallout. We will be because there is no money who is willing to come in and patch all the holes that has been created by Najib and 1MDB. Who is this IPIC? This IPIC is the company that provided the along guarantee Last year, I talked about the along guarantee to 1MDB. 1MDB raised 3.5 billion US dollars from bonds overseas. You know, They raised these bonds, it's fine. They didn't get a, a letter of support from the government. Very good. But they got a guarantee from IPIC. Eh? How come a foreign subsidiary provided a guarantee to 1MDB to raise 3.5 billion in order to buy the power plant Tanjung? Tanjong Energy and Genting Sanyin. Why? Very simple. We provided the guarantee, IPIC provided the guarantee because 40% of the proceeds will be parked with me. Can you imagine? Uh, I take a loan from the bank, 3.5 million, 1.4 million I cannot touch. I have to give to someone else. And someone else can do whatever they want with the money. Not only that, I have to give them additional options, rights to buy all the power plants that I'm buying, up to 49%. And because of that, 1MDB had to pay, I picked a lot of money to redeem the options. The last count I did was approximately 1.4 billion ringgit. So the question then, the, dot, the dots starts to connect. You have IPIC coming to help, why? You have 1MDB giving a lot of lucrative contracts to IPIC. Why? Because the bank, the bank which provided 681 million US dollars into Najib's private account, is Tanor Finance, in British Virgin Islands, is also owned by International Petroleum uh, Investment Corporation. So the question now is, is 1MDB money, which was raised from bonds and substantial part of it parked with IPIC, that money came back into Najib's personal account as a donation. The question for MACC to confirm and investigate is this. Please check if the money that was deposited into Najib's account, whether it's a real donation, or it is really a deal transferring money from 1MDB out to International Petroleum Investment Corporation through one of its nominated agencies parked back into the Prime Minister's personal account. That is what we want to check and I can assure you when Parliament starts again in October, I will pursue this matter to the very end. And we must have hope. I am a lot more hope today than I had one year ago. I can see the anger in the people, not only the anger in our traditional supporters, all of you here. 
I see the anger even among the civil servants. Very clear. They are fed up of this government. They say even corruption got limits. <laughs> the Malays in Felda, they are angry because they were told if I buy Felda shares, I will become very rich. So they all bought. 92,000 Felda settlers bought Felda shares at 4 ringgit 45 cents. It was supposed to be a discount to market price. What's the price today? 1 ringgit 56 cents. <laughs> you know, they don't buy a lot of shares. The first time they buy shares in their life is probably when they bought Felda shares when Felda got listed. So each of them have 800 shares in Felda. Not a lot. But they borrowed money from Maybank to pay for the Felda shares. Every month, they pay 100 ringgit to finance this loan. So every day when they see the newspapers, they open to the finance page, they only look at one share. They look at the share price of FGVH. Ay, yo! Drop 65%. In total, for all these Felda settlers, they have lost more than 250 million ringgit. You think they're not angry? Eh? They are also angry. And with the new Harapan Baru happening, our new hopes is becoming alive. I'll be honest, we always have a bit of problem working with FAS. We like leaders like Mat Sabu, we like leaders like Khalid Sama, we like leaders like Mujahid, we like leaders like Joki Pli Ahmad, we like leaders like Hatta Ramli. But there are also leaders like Hadi Awang, there are also leaders like Tantawi, there are also leaders like Zudi, and many others that we are very uncomfortable working with. You know, but we work together anyway in the hope of achieving a common policy platform to deliver the hopes of the people. Unfortunately, they broke the promise to hold on to the common policy platform. And hence, because of that, the principal leaders in past have decided to break away and form a new party. And this time round, DAP will work with the new party under Harapan Baru, with no more qualms. We don't have to worry about all the fickle-minded uh, decisions that Hadi will make to override their own central committee decisions. We know we will have partners that we can trust, and we know that the rakyat in Selangor will give full trust to the leaders of Harapan Baru, because they are the type of moderate Malay leaders we want leading this country. And I have a suggestion for everyone. I have a question for everyone. We don't have a name for this new coalition yet. A coalition with DAP, PKR, and Harapan Baru, whatever the new name of the party is. So I have a suggestion just to get feedback whether you like the name or you don't like the name. Because I don't like Pakatan Rakyat 2.0. Not nice. Okay. From now on, I hope we can refer to this new proposed coalition as Pakatan Harapan Rakyat. Or Pakatan Harapan? Can or not? Pakatan Harapan can or not? So let's call the new coalition of progressive splitting from PAS, PKR and DAP, Pakatan Harapan. And let Pakatan Harapan take the people in the next general elections to defeat Barisan National in Putrajaya. I have one last thing to say. We all see that the PAC has been crippled. I see the PAC, the speaker has dictatorially, I may be punished for saying this, uh, the speaker is very powerful. I can be kicked out of parliament for a few days uh, 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 because of that. But the speaker has dictatorially suspended the activities of the parliament, parliamentary accounts committee. The AG has been sacked, kicked out. The Deputy Minister, Deputy Prime Minister has been chopped. The Special Branch Chief has been replaced. The Judiciary is compromised. They recently allowed a, uh, an appeal by the Election Commission to allow them to gerrymander state seats in Sarawak. Many of our institutions to take on a corrupt administration has been compromised. 
Even MACC officials which are investigating the Prime Minister has been threatened with investigations under 124B. The people are not left with many choices left. I do not like demonstrations. Let me tell you up front. I, like many of you down here, don't like demonstrations. We don't like going to the streets and go rah, rah, rah. Some people like it, I cannot. But because all avenues are lost, every institution in Malaysia investigating corruption has been compromised. We Malaysians have no choice but to go to the streets to show our might to the government of the day, the rakyat's displeasure and the rakyat's demand for a clean regime to take over Putrajaya. I will be there on 29th of August. I will be there and obviously as all of us fear, for all who are going there, we risk being arrested if we are going for per se. That's the highest thing, the, the biggest thing, the biggest thing on everyone's mind. Someone asked me, an auntie asked me, hey, 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 I'm going per se on 29. Do you think I will be arrested? But I told, I'm telling people today, we should not fear being arrested. The rakyat today should not fear being arrested because the risk of being arrested today is minute compared to the damage it will cause the future generations of Malaysia if we don't go out to the streets and show the people's voice to the administration. It is for our children, for future generations that we want to go to Brussels. We will risk ourselves so that they will have a better government when they grow up. They will have a country to return to after they study overseas. They will have a home they will be proud with. So I hope the people of Petaling Jaya and all the 3,000 supporters I have here will be out with me at Brussels on 29th of August to tell Najib to step down as the Prime Minister of Malaysia. Cannon on! Cannon on! And I'd like to express my deepest thanks and appreciation to all of you here for the donations that you have provided. Donations we have collected for this evening is 120,160 ringgit. Thank you very, very much for the kind donations. We will show Najib what the people power is. Then, thank you so much. Selamat malam, salam jatra, salam ubah, salam bersih.